All right, shifting the focus now to broader market and looking at trends and sectors, some things maybe to keep on your radar. Doug Evans is with us, Chief Investment Officer at Callan Family Office. So a big week of economic data. Of course, the jobs report was front and center today. The Fed, you know, running off that balance sheet a little more slowly. What did you think and what do you make of it? How do you feel? Uh, good afternoon, Nicole, and uh, happy Friday. Thanks for having us, having me on. You know, I think overall you have to feel constructive about the market. Um, sure, maybe not as many jobs as people were expecting, but 175,000 is still a pretty good number. I think the fact that you had expectations for potentially two rate cuts, uh, you had probabilities jump up earlier today. I think that's a, a comfort for the markets and gives room for investors to continue to stay invested. Yeah, understood. So, I mean, are you worried about inflation or, uh, you know, you said the jobs, look, 175,000 jobs added it is still pretty good to your point. The quit rate has come down, things like that. So um, if you're going to take sort of somewhat of a risk on view, um, where do you put some area money to the work in some of the markets? You know, I think we're still pretty constructive on several parts of the broader markets. Um, private credit continues to be a pretty big area of focus. Um, we talked about that last time. That's been a theme for over a year now. But, uh, you know, you can couple that with areas that we see. There's There had been some softness in, in venture capital. You've seen some of the net asset values coming down. You've seen a rationalization in prices. Uh, so that still feels like a good area to continue to create some allocations to. And we'd put right next to that in things that we see actionable this year in distressed real estate. So much of the real estate market has been through a shaking out process, either from how debt has been restructured and or just the knock-on effects that have come from office. But there's going to be some areas to be a, 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 a buying right, as they would say, uh, in times of distress. And we think there's definitely some opportunities there as well. Yeah, understood. When you look at the different areas, first of all, you mentioned real estate, distressed real estate. I wanted to get to tech, too. But first, tell me about, you know, some of these opportunities that you do find. How do you sort of, um, you know, hone them out? Because I know office and some parts of office are, are good, but most of that has been more under pressure. But other areas like medicals doing well, some of the malls are doing better, etc. cetera. Um, you know, when it comes to real estate, how are you picking and choosing there? Yeah, it's interesting. So there's there's clearly uh, different parts of the market. There's lots of subcategories in real estate you should be thinking about. But um, back to one of your prior guest comments, it does get down to uh, your exposure to energy. So energy infrastructure continues to be a challenge in the country. So the reason why I bring that up, clearly there's a big run right now on data centers for data storage and processing. And so that's a big part of the narrative. It's very difficult to get uh, incremental space there with power. So it's not just the real estate play for the data center, but also how can you couple that with getting enough kilowatts to go along with that project? So uh, you, you can lead down that path of not only just the data center itself, but also for the energy projects that go along with it. Conversely, you certainly have uh, people reimagining different parts of retail. Um, we've seen that going on now for a while moving away from being an inventory location and now towards one that's more experiential. Uh, clearly those uh, pivots have been working pretty well. And I think you're still seeing uh, the recalibration of the traffic, right? So before we were fairly urban dense uh, centric, but now we have more of a distributed workforce that's starting to change the flow, starting to change the traffic and what gets people out of the new office into, uh, into new commercial areas. So for those who find those ways to re-engineer and to repurpose, uh, there's lots of opportunity. So I think there's uh, there's room for different parts of the real estate market. Yeah, yeah. What about tech? Um, at the Callan family office, I'm sure people come in and say, oh, I've been watching NVIDIA and I've been watching Microsoft. And, you know, especially when you see Apple, right, with the big uh, the buyback and the dividend and are people saying, hey, I want Apple now. Um, you know, what are they asking for when it comes to tech or what do you advise them to do when it comes to tech? Yeah, so it's great. I mean, and congratulations to Apple for having another record-setting uh, buyback. I mean, it's unbelievable, $110 billion. I think, uh, right, that raises their cumulative buyback announcement over a half a trillion dollars 
you just think about all that capital. Um, I think there's a couple of ways to think through that. First of all, there's obviously the Magnificent Seven, which is still charging and we think still has some room to run NVIDIA in particular, right? If you look at its perpetual sales growth, it's probably mid to upper teens, uh, just depending on how you model that out. So you still have a long ways to go there. But you know, conversely, coming back to my venture capital comment, it also makes room for innovation and innovation in the private markets and having a great and healthy exit market. So for people who do make investments into the private markets, private companies, innovation has a lot of room to uh, find buyers. So it's one thing to buy back your stock, it's another thing to buy the new idea that changes the world. So we find that quite constructive uh, and that ecosystem definitely feels buoyant when you can have firms like Apple that can deploy this much capital just in a buyback, what they could also do in buying you know, new ideas and new technologies. I mean, of course, diversified portfolios are always a way to go. And sometimes people look for dividend payers or even short-term treasuries has been somewhat of a safety play. How about going abroad? You didn't mention maybe emerging markets. Is that something maybe that you're interested in? You know, there's a there's a lot of temptation there. So uh, in, there are some areas that are considerably more attractive than others. Um, I think for those who think about emerging markets and the non China equation, you're seeing a lot more flows there and a lot more attention. Clearly, valuations are very, very attractive. Uh, it's always nice to be a buyer of foreign assets when you have a strong dollar like we do today. Uh, and it's also, uh, you know, just from a relative growth perspective, things are starting to get better, right? The global economy is, in, is not as languishing as it was. You actually have it slightly reaccelerating despite some of the conflicts. So it is quite tempting to be a buyer of non-US. For those who are dividend seeking, clearly non-US assets are paying quite a bit more uh, and almost any value or income oriented equity play, uh, you're picking up anywhere from two to 300 basis points over the comparable US uh, type exposures. And so for those who want to be patient, I think you, uh, you can clearly create exposures there, but uh, the space does suffer a lack of catalyst. So we don't see anything that's going to motivate uh, capital flows enough to create new kinds of outperformance, but it's something worth watching. I think back to EM, one area that uh, yeah. to the positive side, uh, many of those countries are still uh, base materials centric or commodity centric. And the fact that commodities really are one of the pace leaders in liquid markets on a year to date basis. I think some of the Bloomberg uh, uh, averages and, and so forth are up maybe, you know, call it 12, 13% uh, year to date. Uh, and that's ahead of even large caps. So I do think there yeah. there's more incentive and, and you might be seeing uh, new signs of life if you, uh, if you feel like uh, you're going to see this catalyst come through. So not, not to turn your back on it, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And just a yes or no, because I'm out of time, but you talked about the leadership of healthcare and how that sort of emerged in your mind and so, or on paper. Um, is that an area you like or not really, just quickly? No, it is. Uh, we definitely like healthcare and we actually see new leadership coming up there. All right, Doug Evans at Callan Family Office. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it.